We're now going to turn to the topic of the mechanics of breathing, which is a large and important area. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's considered along with ventilation that we dealt with right at the beginning, but it's such an, an important area that I personally think it's easier if we discuss it separately, and so that's what we're going to do. And we'll start by looking at the muscles of respiration. Now, inspiration is normally active, but Res but expiration under resting conditions is passive and the lung simply returns to its equilibrium position. The most important muscle of inspiration is the diaphragm shown here. The diaphragm is a thin sheet of muscle that stretches across under the lung. It's uh, connected to the ribs at the side and the spine at the back and when it contracts two things happen. One is that when it shortens it, it uh, comes down and you can see that that increases the vertical dimension of the thoracic cage. In addition, when it contracts, the ribs are moved out, as you can see at the bottom. Now, perhaps it's a little bit difficult to understand how the ribs move out, so that when the diaphragm contracts, it increases the pressure within the abdominal cavity down here, and that causes the ribs to move out. Now, the diaphragm moves down about a centimeter or so during normal breathing, but in a, an extreme inspiration, it can move down as much as 10 centimeters. The diaphragm, as I say, is separately innervated so that if one side uh, is paralyzed, if the phrenic nerve is damaged for some reason, and that can be easily tested by asking a patient to sniff, and when he sniffs, the active part of the diaphragm goes down, but the passive part moves up because the pressure inside the thoracic cage is reduced. PTA help. Test 11. Retell lecture and summarize spoken text. Sample 86 response from PTA help. Mechanics of breathing is an important area is commonly misrepresented with the ventilation, but it is easier if discussed separately. In respiration system, inspiration is normally active, whereas the expiration is passive. When the lungs return to its equilibrium, the diaphragm, which is a thin sheet of muscle, stretched across the lungs connected to spine at the back, when it shortens, it comes down. In addition, when it contrasts, ribs are moved out, diaphragm is separately innervated, and if one side is paralyzed, it can be tested by asking the patient to sniff. Then, the active side goes down and passive goes up as the pressure inside it reduces. One really helpful thing that you can do to help reduce prejudice and discrimination is to recategorize, to find ways to expand your schemas or expand your um, kind of concepts of different groups. So rather than treating people as kind of a member of a stereotyped group, to try and approach each person as an individual, right? Trying to see people as an individual rather than part of a group with shared characteristics or stereotypical um, kind of actions or thoughts or beliefs. Another thing that you can do um, is have controlled processing. Try to train yourself to be a little bit more mindful um, of people that differ from you. So suppress your um, prejudice beliefs or challenge them. Actively think about them and try and control the way that you think about the world and that processing that you might have. Another thing is to be open-minded. Be open to new things. Uh, don't make up your mind before you have enough evidence um, to do so. So always try and be open to new possibilities, new people, new ideas, new whatever, um, and try not to again make conclusions uh, maybe before you have enough evidence. 
Another thing that will help with everything we've mentioned so far is to have improved group contact. Always makes me think of Breakfast Club, of the different people hanging out with each other, in this case by force, but still um, it has this effect of improved group contact. Hanging out with different people can increase your exposure to different groups, to different people that you might not normally have met. It will help you to recategorize and expand your schemas, which we talked about earlier. So hanging out with people that you might not normally. Expand your horizons. Do new things. Push your boundaries. PT help. Test 11. Retell lecture and summarize spoken text. Sample 86 skulls response from PT help. The first and foremost tip to reduce the prejudice and discrimination is to recategorize your convictions related to the stereotype groups. Try to follow the individual approach by meeting them personally. The second tip is to be controlled in processing your mind and train to be mindful towards the people differ from you. You must actively think about it. Another thing is to be open-minded and always turn yourself open to new people and possibilities, and consider carefully before giving sweeping conclusions. Last but not the least, the most important tip is to have improved group contact. It will help you to gain exposure and recategorize your thoughts. You should do new things and push your boundaries. Comparative advantage is a theory of trade. It explains why people trade and which goods people should trade if they want to maximize their well-being. It's actually useful to understand comparative advantage to begin with a false theory, a very plausible but incorrect theory of trade, namely the theory of absolute advantage. So let's consider a simple model. Let's suppose that labor is the only good used in production and that we can produce computers or shirts. Now let's suppose that in Mexico, it takes 12 units of labor to produce one computer. And again, in Mexico, it takes two units of labor to produce one shirt. Now let's compare with the United States. To make it simple, we'll suppose that in the United States, it takes just one unit of labor to make one computer and one unit of labor to create one shirt. Now, from the absolute advantage theory of trade, it should it may seem obvious that there in fact will be no trade here. It may seem obvious that the United States will uh, outcompete Mexico on all margins. After all, the United States in this example is much more productive at producing computers and also more productive at producing shirts than Mexico. So this is a case where we might think, well, the United States is so much better at producing both computers and shirts that certainly there's no reason for the United States to trade with Mexico, its less productive neighbor. That's the theory of absolute advantage. It's very plausible. It's also very wrong. To see why it's wrong, let's take another simple example.
PPT help. Test 11. Retell lecture and summarize spoken text. Sample 86 skulls response from PTA help. Comparative advantage theory is the theory of trade. It certainly delineates at which goods a country should trade and why. It can be exemplified from a theory named absolute advantage, which is equally plausible but a wrong theory. In the given example, suppose two countries United States and Mexico have labor as the only factor of production, where Mexico takes 12 units of labor to produce one computer and two units of labor to produce one shirt. On the other hand, U.S. take only one units of labor each to produce both the products. In this case, there is certainly no reason for U.S. to trade with Mexico, because it outcompetes its neighborhood country in all the aspects. It is really a fallacious theory. Survey.